Welcome to our annual members meeting. I very much appreciate you coming. We can't have this meeting without you. And I'm glad that there are the number of us here that there are because we hit our threshold for our voting today to be valid. Our bylaws stipulate a 15% participation rate. And so we need 15 people. We need basically from a voting standpoint of 96 voting members in the association. And so we need 15 people to be able to help hold a vote. So quick demographics update from last year. We currently have 111 total members. 17 of those are association members, so they're not voting members. Um, you've got five more that are administrative members, which means they track our, they subscribe to our email but they don't participate in it. From a association membership standpoint, we have 49 NAR, 48, sorry, NAR members, 11 Triple E members, and then five that are members of both, in addition to those. And the remaining members of our club are not members of a national association. So about 50% of our club are affiliated with either National Association of Rocketry or Triple E Rocketry Association. From a certification standpoint, Many of us in the room were certified. Uh, that is pretty typical. We're about 50-50 certified and not certified. 100% certifiable though. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the time over to Jeff. Jeff, if you wanna pause what you're doing and talk us through the financial status of the club, I'll flip charts for you. It's your... Yeah, sure. I'm gonna look at this here. Everybody's looking at that. Okay, so the current statement of the accounts, you can see 2023 compared to 2022, $35 in the cash box, 3,366. This is the fiscal ledger that we reported with our paperwork. So this cuts off at the end of September. So anyway, yeah, I'm sorry, back, back. Yeah, so uh, $2,210.90 in savings. We set up an auto transfer of $20 because uh, Wells said our account wasn't active and they were gonna close it. So just have $20 go from checking into savings every month. And that just helps, you know, have that rainy day fund handy for you. So we have a total of 52.49.56 in 2023. Compared to 2022, we finished up at 54.99. So we're behind 250 bucks. And that's probably because like I said, I cut this year off at the actual fiscal whereas last year it was actual up to the moment of this meeting last year. Um, okay, next. So overall here, we're looking at, you know, our revenues at the top, event registration. Now event registration was specific to Desert Heat, family membership renewal, 1650, family membership application, that's new, is 1050. Associate membership renewal was $75 and associate membership application was $300. Membership level change, uh, $50 worth went up from associate to full, and one went down from uh, family membership to associate membership. Uh, I broke out range fees this year separately, $455 collected at range fees. And that's, well, remember that the associate membership does not include range fees. So we created the associate membership because there's people that, historically supported the club, though they didn't attend necessarily. Uh, $25 gets you, <laughs> you, you, you can weigh the balance, 25 versus 50, how many launches am I gonna make? If you're gonna make more than two launches a year, you're gonna wanna go with the family membership. Um, guests, I guess, yeah, we had some special events where we were uh, taking uh, fees for guests. It's not normal you know, for us to take guests. So there's $130 there. Online store, $1,300 and 64 cents. And that was the t-shirts for Desert Heat. Grants between NAR and Tripoli, we have $500. Cash receipts, now cash receipts, bulk of that was from Desert Heat. Uh, the remainder of that is the deposits from our website for the various fees that were collected that weren't accounted for above. Uh, $2,630. We have $2.83 200, $2 interest on our savings account and donations of $830 uh, for a total of $1,137 in revenue. 
Now, our expenses, our reoccurring expenses totaled to $2,212.14. A uh, bulk of that goes to Timpa. A bulk of that also, uh, let's see. I don't have that in front of me. The big. So we have some wild apricots. Yeah, yeah, wild apricots, a big, the other big chunk. Yeah, because between yeah. Timpa and wild apricot, yeah, thanks for that. The website costs us $800 a year. But when you look at the logistics that it provides, being able to book people, book volunteers, sell merchandise, collect donations, et cetera, all on one platform with a, a minimal amount of man, a management required. It's not like not any of us are web coders or anything like that. You know, so that, that uh, Wild Apricot, the web hosting platform that we're using right now is really actually pretty, it, it's pretty capable for our club. And I think it's a definite boom. Now the incidental costs, this is just the stuff that came out as, as things happened. We spent a lot of money on field maintenance, um, repairing uh, the launch equipment. We have to be careful when we're uh, packing up, especially use the little uh, hooks on the power cords because if you pull the power cords like that, we actually ship, ship that back to the uh, manufacturer. Um, that was 280970. And then I broke out the desert heat expenses for 425097. I don't have the desert heat broken out. We made a little money off of desert heat, not much. And we don't really intend to make a lot of money. We want to have an excellent, you know, event, excellent multi-day event that attracts people to uh, the hobby. Let's see membership. Uh, membership uh, went up this year. Yeah. We often get our new members because they start participating in events, but we didn't track it specifically. Yeah, that's a good idea. Desert that's heat versus other. And this was the second year we've re five desert heat so. and the other thing that happens is people only go to desert heat and that's the only thing they go to all year it's interesting so our total expenses were 92 72 81 and we net gained 18 64 19 i just uh go ahead i just kicked the next one over yeah okay so this just compares uh this year to last year and this gives us a good place to have talking points we made a couple k more uh, and a lot of that, I think, was driven by Desert Heat. Obviously, we did increase the family membership uh, expenses. You see, the expenses pretty much kept track with the revenue. And we wind up a net $133 cash this year ahead of last year. Uh, and when you think about the money we put in, you know, additional trailer improvements, a complete wireless launch set, including a redundant launch control unit now to spare. So if the launch control unit goes belly up, we have another one. We had an event this last year where we didn't have a launch control unit and the launch date was coming up. And we were kind of hoping that it would arrive in time. So that, that's a big deal there. Obviously, the ongoing maintenance. The biggest, Our biggest gap, and we've talked about it this year, last year, the year before, is the field maintenance. And we're going to have to start getting our head around how are we going to, I mean, if you look at the size of that field and the amount of material that needs to be cleared from it, you know, and you've got to do that twice a year, you got to do it coming up into the season, you got to do it coming out of the season, you know, so before summer and after summer, you, know, you get your winter growth and then you get your summer growth. And, uh, you know, so it's like twice a year, we're going to have to come to grips with something. That I'm, I'm guessing about 4K. Every time we've tossed it around, I had somebody out there two years ago, $1,500. Other people have thrown that number around. Obviously, inflation since then. Um, our real thought is, how can we get our own tractor? We have friends with tractors, but they're kind of, can't always get them. And, you know, I can't blame them. Somebody's got to put their tractor in a trailer, come all the way out to the launch site, and drive around on their tractor. You know, we really kind of need our own tractor. The mowers at... Uh, Timper are shot. We were out there uh, before this last launch. We wanted to get the mowers out, and neither one of them were operable. Their tractor is ancient, and we racked up expenses last year repairing Timper's tractor. So we really want to start thinking about how can we drive. Um, essentially, you know, in the conversations that we've had, and uh, it's going to be something I'll have to spearhead this year, is more of a 
charitable presence on our website where members can come if they so feel inclined, but also if you have, you know, companies and stuff that you're aware of that we are 501c3, you know, you cut a receipt. There's companies that actually look to donate. And when you look at our charter, our charter is, charter is all about educating the community about model rocketry. It's not about us going out and having fun. Yeah, we go out and have fun, but we want to educate the community about the safety and the science behind model rocketry. So let's look forward to that this year. And thank you very much. We'll talk a little bit more towards the end of this about some of the opportunities for donations. Uh, in particular, those of you who work at Raytheon, we are part of the Benevity Network, which is the partner that Raytheon and many health corporations use for matching donations. So if you want to make a donation to Sarah, do it through Benevity, you can get Raytheon to match. Yes. And other companies. I don't know who else is here. The question we talked about Amazon. Amazon Smile was discontinued. This yeah, past yeah. Year. Amazon stopped that across the board. So it's unfortunately, we're not we part of that. Loaded. We are part of the Arizona Kids <laughs> program as well. So those are the two, but Ebony and Arizona Kids are here. And, and several companies in Tucson, at least six or eight, I don't know, are part of the national point of light using the federal program. Send me the info on that and we'll go look at what it takes to become certified through that first. Okay. Is it voter data or for For a very brief <laughs> moment. <laughs> and it's not very profitable. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's, it's multiple <laughs> points in life. So you get multiple. <laughs> it's going to be necessary. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the best, but <laughs> what's our spectacular? So let's continue to uh, to our invitation to each of you to help. As as you saw in my email that I sent out yesterday, if you read it, I'm stepping down as president. I will remain active in the club. I've asked to uh, be able to be the chair of our corporation committee. That's the committee that handles our 501c3 filings annually. Here's our corporate corporate corporation commission corporate commission. It handles our Benevity and Arizona Gives work. It handles our annual statements and whatnot in conjunction with the Finance Committee led by Jeff for our finance. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to serve. There are multiple committees. We're going to go through all of them a little bit later in the presentation, but please be part of, of a committee if you're not able to serve as a member of the board. There's lots of opportunity, even if it's to help with the range, or with safety, with communications, um, with several other areas. Right. Sir. And one, and even if it's just one or two uh, times that you can help us, because we have 115, 17 registered members, something like that. I mean, even if we got 10% to participate, even just at two of our work events a year, that would make it a lot better for everybody. Yep. That's true. Uh, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, we, we understand that. We don't want that to be an excuse. <laughs> We're just asking for help. Mm -hmm. And there's even other events like at schools and uh, yep, supporting reach. educational outreach that are really a lot of fun. Well, like good opportunity. This morning, James Brandon, Bob Brown, and I were out at Eagle Park helping. University uh, of Arizona Mechanical Engineering has the French Exchange yeah. program, and we were out there this morning flying rockets. So there's all kinds of different events that we can always use an extra body or two. Very true. And the one benefit you do get is Friday afternoon and evening flying at Desert Heat. That is volunteers only. There you go. So there is that one benefit. <laughs> all right. Our committees include the Communications right. Committee. Yeah. committee. Do you have a question? I was wondering if you like to say about the volunteer of And that is the choice that we've made is that we are trying to limit the wholesale 
spreading of email spam. Uh, people start to block it if we spend too many. What I would encourage you to do, Durham, if you're interested in the outreach portion, is to raise your hand and say, hey, I'm interested in being part of the outreach team. That's one of our committees. And then you'll get the email every time that we schedule those. It's kind of an opt-in opportunity so that we don't cross that line into lots of emails. And then one of the things that Mike and I and others have talked about is the, on the members only tab is that we'll start seeing if we can post that information on the members only tab. Yeah, that, that'll help with the email. We'll, we'll work on getting a spot on the website. To start, there's a, there's a sign up sheet with each of the committees on the table here, and I've been, I took them to the last launch. So right by where you fill out your range cards, that's just, you know, this is the group that's doing all the work right here. Uh, but we're looking for, I totally hear you, other people just to give an hour or half an hour every other month kind of a thing, just to discuss some of the things that are going on. But you're right, we're, nobody knows about these things. So we're trying to create some vis visibility and this is a start. So each of you, if you want, after we're done, these will be sitting up here. If you want to, and there's a little description of what each one of these things does and meeting frequency, like community community outreach, which these guys just talked about, probably meet once a month on Zoom. What are we doing? What are the what are the events? And then all the rest of them. So there's communications that handles our communications, social media, pub newsletter, et cetera. Community outreach. This year we did six or eight uh, schools plus the 4-H competition down in St. David's. And as Matt is saying, we've probably done uh, plus stuff that was not necessarily on um, Sarah's schedule. Uh, we've probably done about 10 or so outreaches with uh, schools, 4-H, scouts, um, so whatever youth organization, and we're also doing outreach. I'm currently doing outreach with the AIAA student section at uh, U of A. Um, we um, get we get asked to consult on other university projects. Yeah. Well. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of outreach opportunities. We have two on the table right now. Uh, January twenty third, uh, Wilson Elementary School, and February seventh is um, Carrollton. Carlson Elementary School. So those are two that we've been at right now for other uh, evening activities. Generally, school, depending on what they have, at a minimum, we'll do a static display to bring the rockets and show off the rockets. And if they've got enough space in the playground or whatever, we'll do a demonstration on the smaller rockets for demonstration. Um, so very fun thing, and, and yeah, if you're interested, we'll make sure that we get you on the list so that you're aware of what's there. It's one of those things if it's scheduled when it's scheduled. So make it great. And one of the things I found interesting with the, the outreach is they run the gamut because a lot of times it's the old school um, STEM night. So you'll see uh, like new of a space program, or Telescope program, we've seen reptiles. Well, one of uh, one <laughs> the they actually had a crocodile. <laughs> there were baby crocodiles. There was a horse and another one this fall, etc. So, anyhow, it there's the corporate committee. I mentioned that earlier and what we handle. The, and we are looking at making some minor changes to the bylaws this year just to make it more consistent and readable. So, if you want to be part of that, I could love fellow editors. Desert Heat Committee, we're actively meeting in those meetings are on our website under the events tab. That's a big one to help us prepare for our event in April. Even though it's early April, we start now so that we can have an effective uh, so we can have an effective event. Exactly. Finance committee uh, that's working with Jeff. Membership committee helps with driving membership. And the range ops and safety committee is in responsible for safety while we fly as well as range that's generally so thank you to everybody on the list and if i miss someone i'm sorry but here's our, our volunteers list from from the year for those who have chipped in most of you are on the list of volunteers which those people who are volunteers right now volunteers 
right now we only have. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about them. I mean, it's one of the things we've talked about doing is let's say we have a Saturday launch or um, is potentially to set up on a Friday, maybe do some uh, field maintenance and fly. And then fly. Uh, or before the, the crowd show up, to, to stay overnight on the field and uh, go fly early on the Saturday. And, and all your plans we both talked about on Saturday, particularly in the poor weather in the summer, and none of us want to stay out there after lunch. But uh, in the poor weather, it is like once after a Saturday lunch, you know, people had helped set up in the night and they could extend the flying in hours so people uh, without the crowd if you had volunteers. We, you know, we want to address that, but we need the people to help us make that happen. We actually fed the crew. Uh, for desert heat, the setup crew and the teardown crew got fed. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the last two desert heats, we handled the food service ourselves. So, you know, the fine folks that put together the menu and bought the groceries, you know, worked it all out and. Yeah, food, Do we get the boot for the volunteers? And, uh, we should should move along. Yeah, we're, we're fine. Okay, <laughs> so big thank you again to all of our volunteers. Uh, one of the cool things that we did this year was we were able, as Jeff outlined, to get our wireless system completely built out. We can now support thirty three pads wireless. So if you're at the main Tempa site, we can do eight and eight on the eight on the model form four on mid eight high and one larger. And so we've got the opportunity or the uh, bandwidth, the availability of, of having the full site operational load wirelessly. We also got a set of equipment for you all. So we don't have to hook up, hook, cart, carry, whatever, transport equipment from the barn to the u launches. So we have that as a second set of equipment now. And that's not wireless yet, but that is fully set up and, and able to support those launches. And I just want to mention that the flag that is very gracious to host that in town and bring it to you all. So just a couple safety items here. Uh, one of the things is, uh, how many people know what a red flag is? Red flag warning. Okay, red flag warning, if you don't know what it is, it's National Weather Service um, warning that basically is if you've got higher wind conditions are dry, increased chance of fire, they will post a red flag. Okay. It is Sarah policy. If we are under a red flag in the Tampa area or even you all, okay, we will scrub the lines. Um, that, um, no questions asked. Okay. Um, and if you aren't, don't know before you go out, you can go to the National Weather Service website and see if we are under red flag conditions. And there is there are links if you want to get them on the next to the Arizona. There's four organizations in Arizona that automatically transmit it to your phone if you want to have them. We'll automatically notify you when they come up. Obviously fire is our biggest concern on the site. Uh, it only takes one day to fire that we may not only use our site, we can use the hop. So fire is job number one out there. One of the elements for affecting fire is our sparkies. It's no guarantee if you show up at a launch that you're going to be able to fly a sparky. In fact, during the summer, it's more likely than not, you will not fly a sparky motor. And please be, be sure you know whether the motor you're flying is sparky or not. Uh, some of them like metal storm, dark matter, but there are other names for motors that are sparky. So again, be about be aware that there is on the high power uh, flight card whether your motor or not is a sparky. Um, and that's something very seriously. If you say if you say no sparky and you fly a sparky, we're going to have some serious conversation.
Um, the winds, again, winds don't make the flying more difficult out there. The one thing that we've had some issues with are change in clustered models. Stage models tend to weather pop more. Um, my worst nightmare is that you would have a stage model that basically flies horizontal and lays down a line of fire. So if we've got higher winds that they have a website. About eight to 10 miles an hour, either fly small motors on, on your uh, stage model or don't fly stage. Um, Anything else you want to hit that uh, high? That's that's it. The other thing you should be aware too is we're still working with the city, and the city is moving with the speed of bug to give us permission, actual permission to access some of the surrounding fields. The north field, I mean, they've given us verbals, but the verbals are worth the paper they're printed on. Um, we're waiting for them to give us some written response and say we have permission to cover on the northern field and some fields to the west of us. One thing everybody needs to be aware of if you're not already, the cap water site that is to the east of us, that is a no enter zone. They will prosecute if they catch you over there. So do not enter that area. The security folks that go through there if they find rockets, will return rockets to the temple. Share something, Ken? I was just going to say not only for the prosecute, but just told us to go ahead. Okay. A um, little bit more range safety stuff there. Uh, again, we're using, we're still using rail for F and bigger. I think most people are compliant with that. If you've got an oddball rocket like a saucer, there's some exceptions to that. But generally, if it's a three fin, a four fin, and a nose cone rocket, it needs to have a rail, rail button on it. Uh, the, and put your cell phone number both on flight cards. So if you're out there in the back 40 and you're missing for a while, we can call you and see if you're okay. And it also helps to put your cell phone number on the rocket. So if you lose the rocket and it's found, we can contact you. Okay, your cell yeah, and when you go out to the field, like, go out with the buddy, please, because that's just what, particularly in the summer months. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of safety. Yep. Uh, so our launch schedule, I'm not going to go through it in detail. Our launch schedule is basically for Tempa is essentially the same as this year. The one difference is... In February, it's earlier by one day, and March, the end of the year, it's earlier by two days, if I remember, because the Super League year coming up in 2024. I think I may have adjusted one weekend on there, um, but otherwise, the launch schedule is still alternating Saturdays and Sundays. The results of that survey we participated in were pretty close as far as who wants Saturdays and who wants Sundays. So we didn't change it. So uh, you'll see us publish on the website the launch schedule. Uh, Desert Heat is April 5th or 7th, if I remember yeah. correctly. So that's all I'm going to talk about for the launch schedule. Udall Park, we still got to get permission for next year on Udall Park. Assuming we get the permission, it will be the second Saturday of every month. So from, I'll go ahead. I'll make it simple here. Okay, for rocketry events, um, the National Association of Rocketry Convention is a virtual convention, and it is scheduled for January 26th, 28th. There's a bunch of different threads online, a bunch of good instructions, virtual tours. Um, so I recommend that when that's announced, look at the NAR website and register through the NAR website. And the virtual NAR is I personally found useful, but one of the things is if you register for them, um, Whatever events, if you had two events that you wanted to attend at the same time, once you've registered, you have three to six months, I forget, so you've at least three months where you can just access it at any time you want. Right. Yeah, if you're, if you're actually registered for the event, you have instant access to the recordings. Um, if you don't register for the event, you take a tiny day before it's available to the public. Uh, another event is the National Sport Launch Web for NAR. 
Uh, that's in Alamosa, Colorado. It's about an 11 hour ride from here. That uh, they have a 52,000 foot waiver. Um, it's an extremely nice flying tool for flying high altitude. Plus, since you're 7,600 feet to start with, your air is already about 30% thinner. So you'll actually go higher. Uh, another event, National Association of Rocketry, is NARUM. National Association of Rocketry Annual Meet. Sarah actually ran the sport range to a large extent this year. Lots of thanks to Bob Brown, who's out there with me. Uh, our Sarah equipment got a workout out there. We, uh, we also got a donation from their club for supporting the event. And uh, that was in, uh, yeah. Boys for the next stuff. This year it is in Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, talking to the folks at Estes, they're talking about having forage and stuff of the Estes plan. Estes will be active in supporting that event. And finally, uh, the Spaceport America Cup, that is a level three typically event where they're launching a nine pound payload to either 10,000 feet or 30,000 feet. If you're a level three flyer, um, definitely uh, in the safety roles, flyer record, uh, your volunteerism would be welcome. Uh, Matt was a volunteer two years ago. Excuse me, I'm planning on doing it again. Doing it again. Uh, and you actually even level two for some of the judging. For the safety roles, you have to be level three. For, for the other roles, for judging, you think level two. So you don't even have Okay, for judging. judging. Okay, so I would encourage people to volunteer. That event is the 17th or to the 22nd of June. I, I just want to add, and I, know, I haven't been doing the next book for it, but I'm watching it. The stream farm seems like a really amazing event to, to participate in. So, if you're interested to see what the young people come up with, it's pretty amazing. This past year, 1,600 students, 116 teams, college teams, roughly half of those teams were far. So I worked with the Australian team last year, Indian team, uh, Thailand. So it's really a very good. And that's what I've got. Thanks. <clears throat> Desert Heat Recap. Michael, you want to take us through this quickly? Sure. <clears throat> This is just to uh, give you an idea of, we had, um, uh, the first slide is attendance here, mostly members, a few non-members there. We had hundred we had actually 201 total participants in Desert Heat. That a growth from the prior year? No, exactly the same. Yeah, actually, no, no, that's not true. I'm, t I'm thinking flights. The flight numbers are exactly the same, but the growth, there definitely is more people there. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Um, this is just to, sh to show you motor data. It's interesting. We have this big event. Fifty percent of people are flying A through D motors. It's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's fun, and, and a lot of kids. Uh, e through G, twenty-two percent. Only twenty, but uh, twenty-seven percent are flying high power. Out of all the flights that we had, two hundred and one flights total last year. Yeah, interesting. Um, and then this is just a to show you, we had 89 uh, of the flights were on eighth inch broads. You know, again, little people come out there to this big event and fly little rockets. They still love to do that. So we get the whole gamut. I think that's what's the beauty of this club. There's other clubs that they're all only high power and we'd fly everything, which makes it for, uh, I think, a great group. I haven't seen Michael Mack. Not Micromax yet, but we I think we've got that Micromax event this year coming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, April 7th through the 5th. Um, we need your help on the the committee to put this all together. We've done it twice now. Should we just add water? We're looking for during the committee <laughs> what your ideas were. Last couple of years, if you've been like, I wish this could happen at Desert Heat next year. I want to hear that first. And then we can look at what, what else we do. Otherwise, we're going to put it together kind of the same way. Um, uh, Jeff came up with the perfect phrase last year that we didn't use as a public, publicize it, but it's a pr our premier event for flyers. This thing is for flyers first, not for spectators. Spectators are welcome, but this thing's for us to fly and have some time to fly. So that's that's the whole point of it. So 
I look forward to working with you guys on making this another spectacular event. Don't say just dead water, because that means it's going to rain. No, <laughs> that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Very true. And no, it is not the 7th through the 5th. That would be a 363-day-long event, which would be wonderful. But I promise not something that's Yeah, my, six, my dyslexia can run out of motors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that's right. All right. Oh, so the list of 2023 accomplishments. So we have continued as a 501c3. We, are, we increased our high-power launch capacity, as mentioned earlier. We have... Thank you gotten our dedicated launch equipment for UDAL. We have our backup wireless launch controller. Mowing, hoeing, weed whacking, machete work, and more has continued. <laughs> we uh are... machete's on the ground. Yeah. And he'll give you a lesson on that. It works. <laughs> it works. Slow. Uh, we did we did do the the continue the weekend launch formats. The trailer's been refined. If you haven't been out to a temple launch recently, the trailer is a Thing of beauty it's getting more organized and easier for all people to help stick down and set up the agua blanca site we have talked to the the faa and gotten guidelines we'll be submitting an application to them next week for a waiver in the seventeen thousand foot range it does take four-wheel drive to get out there or a high flat ground clearance vehicle uh, if you want to know if that's for real, talk to Ken or I. Uh, we can tell you about a, an hour or two spent high centered in a Corolla. My bad. <laughs> so, yes, so it doesn't require that to get out there. So, it'll be a little more intentional thing, but to have, yeah, but to have a, a 17,000 foot almost waiver here locally, that'll be great. So, but we still have to get approval, but. Uh, there you go. And there and there's a parking, there's a park and ride area, a place where people do park and ride just outside the entrance to the uh, Ironwood Forest National Monument, which it's part of. And so there's a even convenient place to meet people right there at the end of Manville Road where the pavement so that's the actual site is It is. It's on BLM land, which is part of the Ironwood Forest. It's the National Monument. logistics will have to work too because like for the bodies. And also, uh, how we're going to get the trailer or the equipment out of either side. We've, we've had three class one launches there already, and, and it's been a let's meet at the barn and get what we're going to use, <laughs> load up one of the vehicles with uh, pads and controllers. Uh, so from, from the parking area. Uh, from the parking area. Uh, and part of that, the, the road is the wash. That's why you, you have higher ground clearance. We will need to do it as a carpool thing where people without higher ground clearance vehicles uh, ride with others. Or, or I, I bumped bum the truck from a friend that said, Hey, you want to drive my fun little car? And I can drive your big car for a Saturday. It worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things that we aren't going to do real regular launches out there. Uh, the initial thought was to try to do something two or three times during the year. I think being out there during the heat of the year was very difficult uh, because it is a very primitive site and it's far from anything. Uh, it is about a 15 minute drive from the Tampa site because so much of it is on a dirt road and just we have to go back. So the same way Yeah, that will be a mandatory two person whenever you go recover a rocket kind of a thing. It's something that uh, we need to be very safety conscious at, but it's a it's a cool site. There's lots of room to do M powered separation distances. And we have enough recovery space that we have permission already to recover on. This isn't like Tampa where we're trying to make sure we're covered with the city of Tucson. We already have permission from BLM to launch and recover on the whole site, which is five miles, five miles in diameter, two and a half miles in diameter. That's the, the offset from permanent structures and the builders. What's the air track? We're off the main route from uh, from Phoenix to, to Tucson. Sorry? We're out of the layer cave. When I used to do the waiver, there was a layer cake. 
big base of course the bottom of the energy core. Yeah, that's what is it so we're right. away from the Tucson one? We're far enough away from Ryan that it's not an issue. We're far enough off of there, there's a main traffic route from Phoenix to Tucson that we're a couple miles less of. And that was deemed the, the FAA contact that we worked through here at the Tucson FAA office. He controls up to 17 hours. It's verbally okay. We don't have the waiver yet. We've got to go through the process. There's still a process that they do on the back end, but the initial assessment was that, that we could ask for that. We probably won't advertise all the way to 17,000. It's probably close to 15,000. We usually decrement by about 10% our published altitudes. That way, if simulations are wrong, we don't blow labor. But still, having, having something give us a nice high altitude like that is not good. Nice to have here. Yeah. Exactly. So we also did bigger and better with desert heat. Uh, not that it was poorly done in 2022, but we're starting to gain traction. And this is second year in a row, having a weekend. Expect that to continue in 24. Udall, we're gonna continue to do, we're still awaiting for uh, written confirmation from the city. So we haven't published the schedule, but we're still looking to do that for nine months of the year. We don't need Udall in June, July, July, August. Do that. In Stop in May, start up again. And our membership is growing. I didn't highlight that on that slide, but we have that increase in membership. So usually we spend some time here. We're about out of time. We have a live thing. Well, we, we need to be back. Yes, Paul, but I, I'm going to solicit ideas for 2024 uh, weed control and recovery approval on adjacent fields, as well as the Agua Blanca launch site, those are already in process and things that we've captured in the past. Improving revenue sources is something that we do not have significant traction on other than the things that we did last year that are continuing like Benevity and Arizona Gives. So we had some ideas here for how to potentially do that, but if you all have other ideas, We'd love to have those and other things in addition to the first three on this list that you think would be important for the flood back on 2024. Are you going to send out the presentation for those people to see? It'll be on the website posted where, where everyone can see it. We can send it to everyone who registered. And I'm recording this meeting on Zoom. I'll yeah. make that available too. Are there any things that you came prepared with in your mind that you want to see us do? launch more rockets. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did receive board nominations before this meeting via email for uh, at least one person in every position. We do have the opportunity to add nominations from the floor. Would anyone here like to nominate themselves or someone present to serve on the board? Are we looking for the uh, legal office? Uh, yeah. Sure, Michael O'Brien is running for president. Ken Weaver is running to continue as vice president. Val Moreno is running to serve as secretary. Val and uh, Kayvon, he always logged in with Maddie and he hates it when I call him. <laughs> <laughs> Val and Kayvon are, are online. That's uh, right. Jeff Black is running to serve as treasurer again. Uh, Davin Uartama will be our only returning member at large. We what what is member at large? Member at large is a representative of the members of the club. There are no specifically assigned duties like the officers, which are the first four I went through. The officers have specific responsibilities assigned to them in the bylaws and added on them by nature of their position. <laughs> uh, the member at large often steps in to assist the the uh, the member the officers, but the members at large are there to be the voice of the membership on, on the, the board of directors. They are directors. There are four member, up to four member at large positions. Only one is required, but we may have up to four. So if anyone would like to serve as a member at large, uh, you can run uncontested uh, up to three. And one of the things that historically member at large, the idea was, like Matt said, to represent the membership. Um, 
is to you know go around at once and introduce yourself and get you know input from the members as to what we could do better or if they would like to succeed. Because again, it's you're all club, and if we don't hear from you, we just didn't do what we know to do. Whereas if you talk to us, do what we can do. And then every every member of the board is is anticipated to attend the monthly board meeting, which are the first Thursday evening of every month at 7.30 on Uh We additionally have two representatives who handle the coordination of our club activities as they relate to the national organization. For Tripoli Rocketry Association, it is the Tripoli Prefect. Prefect. John Kerry is running to continue in that role. And for National Association of Rocketry, it is the NAR Senior Section Advisor, and Steve Lubliner is running to continue in that. Take the nomination, Kevin Westfall, as a member at large. Kevin, do you accept that nomination? Awesome. We'll add you now, actually. Can't say what you tell us. <laughs> that's true. I'm in trouble now. That's the question. Westfall, that's Okay. Are there any others who would like to run as members of Bunch? Any other nominations from the floor today? I don't hear any. Let's go ahead and commence with the vote. If you can monitor online, Michael. Yes. If the elections are not contested, can we just potentially just do the schedule separately with the entire slate? Uh, with the exception of Tripoli Prefect and NAR Senior Section Advisor, yes. So, all in favor of Michael O'Brien serving as president for 2024, Ken Weaver serving as vice president for 2024. Jeff Black serving as treasurer for 2024. Val Sorry, Val Moreno, I forgot you, secretary for 2024. Davin Uartamo and Kevin Westfall serving as members at large for 2024. Please raise your hand and the, you vote in the affirmative. It appears to be unanimous here. Kayvon, you want to, if you can uh, do a little thumbs up thing on the... Uh... On your screen. There you go. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Voting is unanimous. I believe there are 17 of us present, <laughs> counting those online. Now, raise your hand if you are a member of Tripoli Rocketry Association. This next vote is only for the seven of six of seven at uh, vote. Those of, in favor, those members of Tripoli Rocketry Association in favor of John Kerry serving as our Tripoli. Rocketry Association Prefect, please raise your hand. He's doing it right now. Are you also Tripoli? Oh, no, got to be Tripoli. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So it was, really, right it was unanimous, stuff. but it was there were seven. Six okay. in the room and one online. All right. Raise your hand if you're a member of the National Association of Rocketry. That I am. Don't um, give me any crap. All right. So all but the, the two of you who are Tripoli. Um, all in favor of Steve Loveliner serving as our NAR Senior Section Advisor? <laughs> <laughs> One hesitation. Other than a cranky, <laughs> almost abstention. <laughs> that was unanimous. James, are you slapping Jerry's hand? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. And congratulations to our 2024 Board of Directors. Uh, we'll spend the next yes so round of applause. We'll the congratulations. Congratulations. One other piece of information. So one of the responsibilities I have as a is I am on the National Fire Protection Association, the Aerotechnics Commission. And that is responsible for the codes of 125 and 1127. And we met last week to go over the initial first draft inputs, public inputs for revisions to those um, codes. Uh, probably the revision that will have the biggest effect, although it shouldn't have too big an effect on Sarah, 
is there was a disconnect in FDA 1127 between uh, the FAA requirement for uh, non uh, participating properties and people and what the NFPA code had in it. Uh, NFPA did say 1500 would keep flat distance. FAA said 1500 feet or a quarter of the maximum altitude expected. So there was that was a, a change that was made to bring the two um, specifications into, uh, into compliance. So other than that, most of the other stuff was detail type stuff. Uh, the, the fun aspect of it is uh, the committee also does fireworks displays and fireworks manufacture. <laughs> And uh, it is kind of eye-opening there. One of the things that they had as they were talking about in the code was the uh, called pillars of fire, where you take a couple pounds of black powder, and then you'll put 50, 100, 400 gallons of gasoline Jeez. on top of it uh, to have the various flame effects. Or you'll do black powder, and then you'll do like Kamora. Know, several pounds of Kamara on top of that again to get a column of fire. So the uh, the safety attitude in the fireworks world and what they do with the fireworks world is considerably different than what we're used to in the rocketry world. It, it was interesting. So are we doing one of those at Desert Heat? <laughs> Well, no. Problem, so, so the first problem with this is they said the biggest one they did was 1,300 gallons. Oh, holy cow. Well, the thing we were saying was, holy, holy cow, was 1,300 gallons at $3 a gallon. Or no, gallons. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as expensive as a So the answer is, if you want to pay for the gas, talk to your safety officer about it. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, though. An O motor. <laughs> oh, you know, I was totally kidding. I don't want to even. So that, that was, it was interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No no motor no way for all higher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. That is the end of our business. There are still some things outside. I left all the stuff on the non pay table out. I'll be cleaning up in here and then uh, head back out if you guys want to look over electronics or parachutes or whatever was on the pay table before. Uh, and now, if not, thank and you hit, for coming again. Hit, and hit the uh, committee if you're interested. Up. Just put yeah. your name on the list. Uh, it is not a huge administrative burden, and many of them are very worthwhile activities. So one last thing to add, but our board meetings are open to the membership of Sarah. They are the always open. They are, unless there's some unusual circumstance, they are the first Thursday of the month. And again, as far as as part of participation in Sarah, um, attending the board meeting, see what the thinking is and what our challenges are. Um, because for example, the field map maintenance is extremely challenging trying to balance the price and the proper equipment and the manpower to go do it. And the if safety. If the anybody safety. knows of a, an opportunity for a large behest, Quest or a, a huge corporate donation to purchase a tractor that's capable. The, the so Tempa tractor, its front axles, we broke. That's why we don't want it. We're looking at about the 10K last. range here. About Here's the 10K else. range. We did this years ago. But we went to a sponsor. <laughs> and they, all we had to do was make sure that For a couple of days, all the welcome to the board. <laughs> fill stuff up, so that, that was in a rural, yeah, like in Sapper. Yeah, we both did. Um, That's cool. I do want to, to mention one thing those 2024 officers who are not currently serving on the board, you're more than welcome to and encouraged to join the December board meeting, which is the first Thursday in December. The Zoom link is online. Uh, 7.30. Yeah, it's not so fun. Yeah, the beauty of joining our meetings as a member is you don't have, you 
You don't get action items. No, I have no responsibility, but lots you can provide your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and then we make and then but Ken always says if you come up with the idea, then you gotta carry carry it out. <laughs> that's why that's why I was laughing. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, sweet. To be, That's very cool. Uh, I'll be slightly morbid here, but there is a uh, no, there is no shortage of gray hair in this room or lack of hair in some cases. My, <laughs> me too. And you know, think about it. We are a five hundred one C three. So if you're of the age where you're forced to make uh, the distributions. From 401ks or whatever, um, consider Sarah maybe making a distribution that you can pull your money out. If it comes to Sarah, it's not going to increase your tax bracket. Or, you know, as far as beneficiary for those accounts, if you can set any money aside, you know, as a as Sarah as a beneficiary, you get to do that. You went to one of these places like the rate that they were in Yeah, I'm not sure if they have four one ks or but just something too we ought to consider is um you know that's where potentially the larger dollars would come from there's one of gifts i know at the college independent parents with gifts for their students you get enough to carry your fifty thousand dollars for their students what's what's the for filing is it 50k? I think it's 50k. Yeah, but if yeah. we have that problem, we can let it. 